space exploration is a relatively new thing, but man has looked to the skies and wondered what the heck is up there since we were drawing stick animals on cave walls. But way before rockets were heading towards space and beyond, balloons were the way from here to the stratosphere. There's a magical quality to hot air balloons, whether solitary or dotting the sky, balloon festival style. But back in the 1930s, a different type of balloon sensation turned faces skyward. I met up with the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation's Kristen Gallerno to learn more. And why are you taking me outside? So I'm taking you outside today to tell you about a very cool event that happened just about a mile down the road from where we are, uh, called the Picard Stratospheric Balloon Ascension. The Picard Stratospheric Balloon Ascension. Yes. Was that an episode of Star Trek? <laughs> In October of 1934, the goal of husband and wife team Jean and Jeanette Picard was to reach the stratosphere in this 175-foot tear-shaped hydrogen-filled balloon so that they could study cosmic rays. Jean was the scientific researcher and Jeanette was the pilot. They also brought their pet turtle along for the ride. They didn't discover the next great thing about cosmic rays, but Jeanette's role made the flight historic for other reasons. She's really the hero of this story. She was the first licensed woman balloon pilot in America. She was also the first woman to reach the stratosphere, and she held that record for many, many years until we actually started going into real outer space in the 60s. She was actually, depending on your definition of space, the first woman to really blow the roof off the sky. Were they above cloud cover? They were really high above the cloud canopy, yes. Almost 11 miles into the stratosphere, which is really high. They were at about 57,500 feet, give or take. Quick science class review. The stratosphere is the second lowest layer of the Earth's atmosphere. and spans altitudes ranging from 33,000 feet to 164,000 feet above the Earth's surface. To give you some perspective on that, the average jetliner cruises at around 33,000 feet. Was this a big risk? People had done it before, so they weren't the first people to go into the stratosphere. But a lot of those earlier flights up into the stratosphere, they were meant to be stunts. And what's really cool about the Picard Ascension is that they were doing it for the benefit to advance science. The Picards rode inside this enclosed metal gondola launching from Dearborn, Michigan in the early morning hours to much fanfare. As with an airplane, the small sphere was pressurized and had oxygen pumped in to ensure they could breathe at high altitude. Jeanette Picard had this great line where she said, when you go up in a balloon, you can't really file a flight plan. You just go where the wind takes you. Did they have any communication with the ground? At the Henry Ford, we have a radio. There were actually two radios. There's one on the ground, and it was put in the back seat of a car that was sort of tracking them as they went along their flight. And then there was another radio up in the air that Jeanette was trying to use to keep in contact, but there was a lot of interference, and the radio wasn't very successful. After about eight hours of flight, traveling at about 90 miles per hour, the Picards made a controlled crash landing in K. Diz, Ohio. Jean and Jeanette Picard, along with other members of the Picard family before them, made their mark as explorers. Their flight was historic primarily for Jeanette's critical role in it. Years later, Jeanette went on to become a professor and acted as a consultant for NASA and as a public educator a lifelong commitment to expanding human potential.